But Bray, we have got to start with this uh, expected suspension of Jim Harbaugh by the NCAA. Uh, according to reports, uh, Austin Meek was the first to report it. From The Athletic. Michigan writer for The Athletic. He says that Jim Harbaugh is going to be suspended for four games uh, and one game suspensions for Sharon Moore and Grant Newsom as part of a negotiated resolution to the NCAA as far as its infractions case. First reported, I should say, by Yahoo's Ross Dellinger. We saw it with Austin Meek. Um, Angelique Shingelis from the Detroit News. Yeah. I want to read for you some of the, just get the nuts and bolts out there, and then we can comment on it, guys. Okay. Um, this is a statement from Tom Mars. Again, this from Angelique in the Detroit News. Tom Mars is Jim Harbaugh's attorney. Here's the quote. We're continuing to work cooperatively with the NCAA staff on an enforcement matter. At this time, we are not allowed to comment on possible penalties or other aspects of the matter. Uh, Dave Abloff, a Michigan football spokesperson, says Michigan is unable to comment on this ongoing case. Uh, Big Ten media days are Wednesday, Thursday in Chicago. Harbaugh is expected to speak or scheduled to speak, I should say, on Thursday this week, the first four games for Michigan, East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, and then Rutgers. Uh, it is unclear whether or not these, this suspension will be weeks, just stay away from the team, or on game day only. And uh, apparently this is the uh, level two violations during a 2021 COVID recruiting dead period and more significantly a level one allegation, the most severe against Harbaugh for lying to and misleading NCAA investigators. Liar. A source had told the news earlier in January that Harbaugh would not admit either on or off the record that he lied to the NCAA. Braylon Edwards, I come to you. Deny, deny, deny. Jim Harbaugh is going to survive this. He'll be perfectly fine. War Manual, I'm not so sure. Let's start. Let's stick with Jim Harbaugh for right now. Look, this isn't going to bother Jim Harbaugh. You just named the best thing you did was you named that schedule of four games that he's going to miss. Nobody cares about East Carolina. Nobody cares about UNLV. Nobody cares about Bowling Green, and nobody cares about Rutgers. Not to mention the fact Ryan denied, denied, denied. He didn't admit that he did it, and it's over a cheeseburger, and it's over a restaurant. It's over taking a recruit out, paying for a meal, which he was not supposed to do. Now. I understand that he made a mistake. He violated. In fact, there are rules, and you have to follow those rules. You know who told me that? Jim Harbaugh told me that when I got in trouble. I was a little bit late for curfew when I was with the 49ers. That's what Jim Harbaugh told me. So as a result, I had to get up early in the morning for one week and go down to the facility much earlier than everybody else. That's what he told me. There are rules, and he broke those rules, regardless how stupid the rules are. They still are in place, and he happened to do it when the NCAA is looking for a win the most. The NCAA no longer matters. NIL has completely come in, cut their legs out. They don't do anything. They have no say over anything. They pretty much govern nothing. They needed this as a win to say, hey, look, hey, hey, NCAA here. We're still over here somewhere. We still have some kind of say. So they'll suspend him for four games. These four games don't matter. He never admitted to it. And I think for recruiting, recruits will look at this, whether it's the family, whether it's the players. This is a guy that I potentially want to play for. He took me out to get a bite to eat. I can't be mad at a coach or a potential coach for doing something like that. I don't think it's harm or foul for Jim Harbaugh. Ward Manuel, however, somebody's going to have to claim, somebody's going to have to take the, the fall for all these things that keep happening in Ann Arbor that are not on the football field for the first time in a very long time. They're off the football field. Ward Manuel is in trouble. Jim Harbaugh, not so much. Is it like Carlo? You got to an answer for Santino? 100%. Look, th this is uh, regarding the violations, the alleged violations that happened in, in a COVID period, in a dead period, in 2021, what have you. The NCAA clearly hates Michigan. The NCAA wants to prove that they are still relevant, as you said, yeah. Braylon. There is no question about this. The NCAA is less relevant now than it ever before in the history of college athletics. Nobody cares about the NCAA. Nobody likes the NCAA. Uh, we've been talking about how inept this organization is as an yeah. organization for decades now. And they want to pump their chest out a little bit. Look, if Jim Harbaugh bought a recruited cheeseburger and lied about it or, excuse me, misremembered the events right. of said cheeseburger or sh fired off a text to a rec recruit or, or held a Zoom yeah. call during COVID or something like that and didn't re really remember. I don't know what I did three years ago either.
I don't know what I did two and a half years ago in COVID either. If you ask me right now some of the things that I did during COVID, I would not be able to tell you. So if he didn't remember the events of the accusations, I'm going to go with that. He didn't remember. And, you know, if it's a brown jug cheeseburger in a four-day dead period or something, whatever the case may be, uh, the NCAA is just trying to stay relevant. They did it with Tennessee. They're doing it with Michigan. Tennessee, they hit pretty hard they have, as far as money-wise. They have no idea how to uh, not sink. And this is one of the ways. Hit your biggest brand right between the eyes. And whether, you know, Jim Harbaugh has to sit for four games, fine. Tom Brady sat for four games in 2016, and the New England Patriots went on to win the Super Bowl that year. So I fully expect if Jim Harbaugh has to sit for four games, Michigan to go on to win the national championship and stick up that big middle finger towards the NCAA. Big middle finger to the NCAA, and at the same time, you look at what Tennessee did. Look, I'm, I'm right here. It's a witch hunt for Michigan, Ryan and Monty. I agree with you 100%. But look what Tennessee did. <laughs> Tennessee came out and admitted to what they did, and what happened? As they admitted to what they did, oh, here comes these scholarship sanctions. They lost scholarships. They lost money. Michigan didn't do that because Harbaugh didn't admit to what he did. He misremembered, like Ryan and Monty said. So with that being said, Harbaugh won that situation, and NCAA is pissed. NCAA has always had a hard on for Michigan because Michigan never needed the NCAA. We didn't have to play dirty like the SEC. We didn't have to play dirty like the ACC. We didn't have to do like SMU did back in the day. We never needed to lean on the NCAA and say, hey, could you cause a break this time? Could you do this for us? That's why they came so hard after Ed Martin. That's why they came so hard after uh, the, uh, the other incident, the Marcus Ray. And the suit. These are the things that the NCAA is clinging on to fight in Michigan. They can't find anything else because Michigan plays by the rules like a couple of institutions around the country like Notre Dame. So this is a witch hunt for Jim Harbaugh over a cheeseburger that he misre misremembered. I'm glad you brought up 2016 when they did that to Tom Brady. Some bears you don't poke. Some bears you don't poke. You damn sure don't poke the bear of this brand where right now they're as close. We are as close as we've ever been. Jim Harbaugh's boys are going to play for him this year. All you did was piss him off. I can't wait. Thank you for suspending Jim Harbaugh for the first four games because Michigan's going to respond in kind. If you are a parent out there and your kid is a little uh, weakling, like out there, little, uh, ooh, weakling. Little, little weak kid, he's out okay. there all meager, weak, small, a wuss. What do you tell him to do? Stand up for himself. You tell him to punch, pick out the biggest bully you see and punch him right in the face. Metaphorically. Yeah, 100%. And that's exactly what the NCAA is. The NCAA is a little weak, uh, what, little weak wuss kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so and has to punch Michigan in the face. I still don't get that. And I said it to Braylon on the break. I'm going to let him explain it to you guys. If Michigan has been innocent all these years and have been a good boy, and they have been, mainly. Why pick on them then? They should be getting the benefit of the doubt, if anything. If you ask me, I don't get this. Man, that's what she says. I, I love you to death. You're a sweetheart, and you don't live in the real world. I wish I could live in the world that you live in. Like, that's not the real world. The real world is the NCAA is this dying entity. Like, this is the first time we've heard those four letters in sequence in how long? The NCAA is dying, and they need to show that they still matter. They need to show that they still make a difference in college football, the only college sport that people care about, particularly right now. They need to show they matter. How do you do that? You go after one of the two largest brands currently in college football. It's Michigan. It's Bama and Georgia. Maybe those three, Ohio State, put them in as four. They're the brand that people go after. So Michigan made a technical mistake with the cheeseburger thing. And now the NCAA has found it in, and now they're going after it. But they look, uh, they look ignorant. Excuse me. They look, they look ignorant. And the reason why they look ignorant is Parker, our wonderful TD, brought up something interesting. Remember when Urban Meyer got suspended because he knew about his coach and what his coach was doing yeah. behind closed doors, lied about it, knew about it, did it in Florida, and did it at Ohio State. Regarding domestic violence. Regarding domestic yeah. violence, regarding drugs, regarding other things as well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just clear-cut as domestic violence. He got two games. Three games. Three. So he got three. Yeah. Okay, he got three games. Excuse the hell out of yeah. me. He didn't get four. Right. He didn't get. My point is, he got three games for domestic violence, lying over and over again, and then some level of drug use, not by him, but by his coach, a guy he knew as a friend. He got three games for that, and he bounced back with nothing. Michigan, a misrepresented cheeseburger, a misrepresented lunch, a sit down, 
This is the NCAA trying to go after one of the two largest brands in sports right now. They look ignorant doing so. It looks desperate. But at the same time, if this was SMU, if this was, you know, Lafayette, Monroe, if this was some school, some small entity, NCAA wouldn't be pressing on this because it wouldn't matter. And this team wouldn't be in the national life. But because it's Michigan, because they need a win, they're going after him. Now that we know what we knew about COVID, yeah. right, and just some of the things regarding it, if there was a coach at a get-together or a Zoom practice or something like yeah. that, don't you just – aren't you like, oh, yeah, we really screwed up on some of these rules. This was some of the dumbest things we've done in our life. You know, some of the rules that, that were levied down. Like – the COVID rules, you mean? Yeah, COVID yeah. rules. What so you what, can do, what, what you can't what do. What you can do and what you can't do as it relates to college athletics. Yeah, this because is the first time. Some of these violations happen. This is the first time it ever Alleged, happened. Allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Don't you just, like, like, don't yeah. you just like, oh, yeah, man, that was a really dumb rule. Sorry we had that one. Let's, we're not going to. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do. Um, and if this is about lying or uh, allegedly, if this is about misremembering events of something, just think about not being able to buy a cheeseburger or any food for any recruit at any time. It should be like three. At this point, now that we know what we know about communication, yeah. social media, the way uh, people talk to each other, text messages... Don't you think these dead periods are some of the dumbest things you've ever heard in your life? I mean, a, a, a recruiting dead period. Where, yeah, I understand maybe uh, back in the day in 1980, Bo had to show up to your front door and you don't want uh, 20 college coaches showing up at Braylon Edwards' front door in 19. Uh, 95 or whatever. I'm not that old. Uh, 2000, uh, 2000, 1999 or 2000. There you go. How there you that? go. There you go. Uh, but now yeah. with this thing, guy can't send him a text message. Guys on campus, you can't just say, oh, yeah, let me buy you a cheeseburger. Some of the rules themselves, and we talked about this with Jamison Williams and yeah. the gambling. Some of the actual rules themselves are so archaic outdated and just flat dumb how we continue these old archaic and dumb rules is really on us and it they're just in place to make organizations like the ncaa feel relevant because without a recruiting yeah. dead period what the hell do you need the ncaa for it's just so dumb yeah i mean some rules obviously needs to be changed you know i don't necessarily uh under i don't necessarily uh think that you know, paying for someone's lunch is the same exact as the dead period. With the dead period, the dead period was allowed for the coaches to have the same amount of time to go after the same kids and see whoever liked their relationship, but at the same time, allowing the kid to have some time to, like you said, I don't need coaches popping up at the door. It's 2023, so you won't have that. But I don't need coaches texting me all the time. You don't need these kids formulating these relationships with these coaches that may get severed if they don't go to institutions. You never know how what people are capable of. But the lunch stuff, Definitely the lunch stuff. If you buy a kid a sandwich, I understand it's rules right now. That's why I said the first thing, rules are rules. But you got to get rid of dumb stuff like that, buying a kid a sandwich and going over conversation, why he may want to come to your institution. But I do understand that dead period. The kid needs time to be a kid. Like The, the, the parents are already forcing all of his time to want to be in, uh, you know, get a scholarship to Michigan, go to the NFL, be on the show quarterback on Netflix. Dead period still gives them a chance to be a kid, go out hang out with your friends, you get that period where coaches can't contact you, institutions can't contact you. You remember that you are only 16 or 15 or 17 or 18. Can I respond to that? Because sure. I think if you are a Michigan caliber athlete now today, no. unfortunately, those that you don't even get to be a kid anymore because all year long you're doing – now you got to do this seven on seven, or you got to go to this camp or that camp. You don't even get to play another sport in, in high school anymore for the most part. You know, it's almost like a full-time business that we've turned youth athletics to, especially for the elite of the elite athletes. Right. Um, unfortunately, they don't get the benefit of being a kid. Playing three, the days of a three-sport high school athlete, 
are over. So are you saying because they already don't get that type of opportunity, then you might as well just forego it? Yeah, up? you might as well just be like, just open it up. Well, that's not fair because that's my, that's like saying like if you're a student athlete, mm. you know what? You might as well just play a full. You might as well not go to school. No, not that. You might as well play a full NFL season. Right. You might as well play 17 games, then a conference championship mm -hmm. for 18, mm -hmm. then a playoffs for tw uh, 19, 20, and then yeah. a national championship for 21. You might as well play 21 games. No, you might not want to do right. that because kids are still in school. Kids I'm, still got to get grades. I'm not saying it's right. But you said you might as well forego it because of it. Well, the, like like a dead period, I'm saying, where you can't text me. So then at what point does it make it where kids don't even go to school anymore? Like what well, You tell me. Like what, what, You know what? Hey, you know what? You're okay. If you're going to play in the NFL, we'll put you in a special program. That's kind of what we've seen now with kids not going to college and going to, like, overtime elite. That's basketball. Stuff like that. It's not football. Well, Basketball, you still got to do yeah. three years before. Let me ask you guys yeah. this. If uh, a coach sits down with football, a couple, yeah, three couple of recruits, oh, excuse yeah, football, yeah, yeah. and he doesn't buy them lunch, they buy their own lunch. Is that still a, is that still a penalty? No, what unless unless how do they know the hell he bought them lunch? Unless though? it's in his dead period. that Ryan's talking yeah. about. you said I think it was within a dead period. I see. It was within a dead. And period. And we still don't know about the whole Matt Weiss situation. <laughs> we we really don't. what happened to him? Did he go with the deflate guys? The deflate gate guys? Did they go, they're all the on guys that deflated they're the all on an island? Yeah. They're all on an island together. They're like home in the Misfit Toys or something. We don't know anything about Matt Weiss. I'm just saying. Who is Matt Weiss? There's, there's, there's a lot of dirty stuff that goes on in football. We know that. Uh, th this was such a minor thing. I think it's pathetic yeah. that, that he gets a four-game suspension. Considering all the stuff and the shenanigans that are pulled off by the SEC alone. But How did they get away with it? And I know Tennessee got hit eight million dollars, like eight million dollars to Tennessee, like that, like like that's something. I, I just I don't understand the whole, the whole thing. The SEC has carried college football in the NCAA for the last twenty years plus. and that's how they and get away with it. And before that, and you didn't tell me Jimbo Fisher hasn't broken rules. But he's you didn't tell me that. But he's under an umbrella, an umbrella that has worked hand in hand with the NCAA for they're years. They're crooks. Okay, but they're crooks together. Michigan's not a part of being a crook. So who are you gonna go after? You gonna go after the guy that's crooked with you before, right. or you gonna go after the clean guy? You know what? Let's pin this on the clean guy who thinks he's too good for the other guys, who thinks their institution is above the other institutions. You know what, Michigan? You're not so squeaky clean after all. We're coming for you. That's all this is. It's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt, but. The door was opened by Jim Harbaugh. He opened the door. The NCAA came kicking it in. But to your point, Mass, it still looks pathetic. The only difference is Michigan's got all the other coaches, all the other teams on their side because the rest of the college football landscape, they don't care about the NCAA, and they will stick together to fight them for years to come. NCAA looks weak. Like this, It sucks, but at the day, UNLV, Bowling Green, Rutgers, yeah, do we care about that? East Carolina? We're going to be perfectly fine. What if he's fine. away for a whole month? And I, heard, I I think you hit the nail on the head. I think this does not, as if they already yeah. needed something to uh, rally around. I think this really puts them all in now. Uh, not that they weren't before. That's It's silly to even insinuate. But I think this really is kind of yeah. like something that will boost them towards a national title well, What if he's not allowed to be near the team for a month? It doesn't matter. They're not playing anybody. Michigan is a well-oiled machine. This is Michigan's best team that has ever returned. Going into the season, on paper, they're Michigan's best team that has ever returned. They're not playing anybody in the first four. Their head coaches, I mean, excuse me, their coaches on that staff have been there for a couple of years. They'll be fine going into that Nebraska game. Then it gets real. Who's going to coach him, you think? Who's next up? Because Sharon's going to get yeah. a game as well. Yeah. So to be Sharon Moore. Defensive coordinator, maybe. <laughs> I, think, I, I, think the, I think the deal would be Sharon. If he does the four, Sharon doesn't do any time, and Sharon will be the uh, interim head coach under that process.